And in response to our review of the DS419 Slim from Synology, we got this note from Joe C about using SSDs in a network attached storage device. He's found in his experience that the life expectancy of SSDs in a server environment is, in his words, crap. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that because I think it is changing, but you got to be careful. Now, I'm not going to give you a highly technical explanation as to how uh, flash technology works, but essentially what you do is you push electrons into a cell and trap them there uh, to write data to a solid state disk. And that uh, action of pushing that electron into the cell eventually wears the cell out because you are forcing it in there and there's only so many times that you can do that before that cell fails and that is why solid state drives wear out the more that they are written to and of course if you're in a server environment that's an area of concern. Now over the years there's been a number of different technologies used for uh, SSDs and the first type that we saw were SLCs where you had one bit per cell. Uh, those drives were very expensive but they also lasted the longest. Uh, later came MLC which was when we really started seeing the price of those drives reduce significantly. Uh, that allowed you to put two bits of data per cell in uh, but that came at the cost of reliability. Uh, what they did to address that for some enterprise users was develop EMLC uh, which would manage how data was getting written to the drive in a smarter way so you would balance out the uh, wear over time. But it wasn't perfect, but it was better than just straight up MLC. And now we are seeing a lot of TLC drives. Uh, these are storing three bits per cell and now we're getting into stuff like 3D NAND flash where you're actually stacking the cells on top of each other inside of the chip. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now. But all of these drives, even the newest, smartest drives out there are subject to wear over time and will eventually wear out. And that's why I was so surprised when I started digging into these Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives that they are based on TLC technology uh, yet being essentially sold and marketed as something that might work in a server environment for a network attached storage device. And at the higher capacities, they also have these really weird capacity levels here, 3.84 terabytes. That seemed very specific to me. And I then dug into their data sheets and they're actually advertising some pretty good uh, write uh, capabilities here over time. So that 3.84 terabyte drive uh, can have 7,000 terabytes written to it before they say the drive will wear out and they're giving you a five-year warranty on top of that. And I did some additional research into it and it looks like what they're doing is in addition to being smart about leveling out the wear, uh, they are also putting a lot more cells on the drive that are not being used right away and then they're reallocating those unused cells when other ones are showing signs of wear. So they can basically bring in new cells to write to when the cells that they've been using uh, are starting to show signs that they may be about to wear out and cause data loss. So the drive is managing all of that and they're essentially, uh, I guess, over-provisioned in that there are more cells that you can write to than what will be available to the user, but the drive will bring in those cells over time in order to prevent it from wearing out overall. And I think this is one of the first real NAS marketed drives. I think C uh, Samsung may have one as well. And it looks like they're really guaranteeing this thing to work over the long term. So what I would suggest you do if you are intending to run a solid state drive based NAS device is to go out and do some research on the drives you're about to purchase to see what the manufacturer is rating the total rights at. Uh, so here you see Seagate did that with this drive, but I'm finding many consumer drives don't provide that information, which means the company really isn't warrantying it for uh, that kind of use. So I think if you can find that data sheet, you'll at least have something that you can have some confidence with and then of course look at the length of the warranty as well. But just know that there is a risk here because if you're doing a lot of writing to those solid state drives, it will wear out a lot faster than a spinning drive might. And I think if you are looking for an asset that you just wanna set up and put in the closet and let it run, uh, you can't really go wrong with a spinning hard drive even though it might be a little bit slower in accessing your data. You at least will not have the right wear out uh, that you will with a solid state disk. And we're also seeing this high endurance flash being marketed in SD cards. Uh, SanDisk has a card now with that as its title, the high endurance line. I picked up a 128 gig card the other day for a dashboard camera. They cost a little bit more than their standard SD cards and they're rating them uh, for much greater writing capacity. 
Uh, so for example, the 256 gig card is rated for 20,000 hours of 1080p recording. And that's often a hard number to come up with because if I record it half a megabit, I will have a lot more endurance than I would if I was recording at five megabits. But uh, I guess they must have came up with an average based on what most security cameras record at. Uh, the 128 that I got is rated for 10,000 hours. But again, they're developing more confidence in the right ca capability of these flash devices and they're starting to market and warranty things based on that. Uh, so we'll have to see how this card does in the long run in my car. I don't drive all that much, so it might take a few years for me to even get close to half of its uh, rated capacity here, but I'll keep an eye on it and we'll let you know how it does over the long term. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, emudev.org, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.